Oh. It's rolling. Oh. She <laughs> started without us knowing. Okay, go ahead. So to what extent does a politically biased media affect social interactions between Americans? And my claim is that politically biased media is causing relationships between American citizens with differing opinions to strain. So from one of the cinema sources, a historian as participant, the author mentions that memoirs and historical documentations are very important. However, they're written for their own purposes. So if I was to talk to my mom about how I got in an argument with my brother, I probably wouldn't mention the fact that I started it just to make myself look better. So you can only wonder what is the purpose of all of these skewed information and all of the propaganda that Americans are exposed to every day. And then from the other stimulus source, attitudes toward Muslim women in the West, the author quotes, plastering the cultural icons over messier historical and political narratives doesn't get you anywhere. So basically, when people are accusing President Trump and his supporters as racist and sexist, uh, it really hasn't gotten them anywhere. It, it has been to no avail because President Trump has still made it into the office and even after almost three years is, is yet to be impeached. But obviously these accusations aren't just coming from mid-air. They have to be coming from some kind of information that has led to this conclusion. But we start off with Maxine Waters, who is a Democratic Congresswoman elected by California. She recently spoke at a rally against separating children at the U.S. border. And she quoted, you push back on them, referring to President Trump's cabinet, and you tell them that they're not welcome anymore anywhere. So she's basically telling all these people, whether or not they're provoked or approached first, she's telling these people, you need to make sure that if you recognize anybody from this cabinet anywhere in public, you need to make them know that they're not welcome there. She also said in this speech that um, you should create a crowd, and no matter where you see them, you need to create a crowd, and you need to make sure that they know they don't belong. And so that's obviously led to um, a couple of, count, of accounts of harassment, like a lot of verbal harassment, which is actually later in the presentation that I didn't do yet. So then we have another perspective, which is of Don Lemon, who is a CNN reporter. He actually did a recent report on Kanye West's recent visit to the White House to see Donald Trump. And he said, go get some help and then come back and make your case. Well, we should really focus on the fact that he said, go get some help. He also says somewhere in the speech that um, Kanye hasn't been the same since his mother passed away in 2007 and also went as far as to say his mother would be rolling over in her grave if she knew about something like this. And um, for him to say go get some help, he was, also, he was referring to Kanye's apparent poor mental stability. And although Kanye has actually in the past posted a lot of off-putting tweets that have led people to question his mental health, Don Lemon actually brought up none of this during his report and basically created this idea that Kanye visiting the White House was just a mere product of his poor mental stability, which obviously led a lot of people to the conclusion that like, if you're a Trump supporter, then you must be mentally unstable. And a lot of critics have actually spoken out against this and pointed out that it's very immoral to use um, mental disorders or mental problems and the loss of loved ones as a crutch to try to convince people that people that support Trump are not good people and that they have bad intentions. So in conclusion, I think that Americans are far too intolerant of one another's opinions and that's obviously led to um, even politicians encouraging people to harass Republicans or anybody part of Trump's cabinet and it's led to a news reporter going on television and saying, you know, if you go, if you support the president, then you basically, there's something mentally wrong with you. But in all actuality, mistreating other people just because they're political opinions, it's not equality, it's discrimination. And especially for people who are claiming that they're fighting so hard against hate and so hard against discrimination, it, they're just fighting it with more hate. They're fighting the people that are so racist and so sexist with accusing them of being mentally unstable and harassing them in public. So that in itself is creating a deep strain between American citizens with different political opinions. And I'm really excited. Okay, 
Abby. Um, so if you would, would you explain the level of certainty that you have about your conclusion, solution, or recommendation? I think that, um, I don't think that um, my possible solutions would work because I thought of solutions like perhaps protesting in a more respectful way. But the thing is, a lot of people I think would pro would not be for that because they would think it'd be taking away their right to protest, which is a violation of the First Amendment. So, no, I'm not too certain on my solutions. And uh, as for um, Americans being more tolerant of one another's opinions, I really don't see how we can possibly create that with, without force. And we ob the government obviously can't force people to be tolerant of one another without a bunch of laws, and I think those laws would violate a lot of the amendments in the Bill of Rights if we were to make them. Good. So, yeah. Nice job.